By the end of today, you'll have created something very similar to this glorious, glorious slash animation. Hello, my croutons, and welcome back to another video. Today, I'll be taking you through the basics of effects here and showing you that using it is actually quite a bit easier than you may have initially thought. Let's get started. Now, before we get to the teaching, I do want to mention that effects here has a decently sized library of sample animations. However, please leave them as that. Use these animations for practice, not in an actual project. I really want to discourage this lazy mentality of just using whatever free assets you can find and not modifying them in any way as early on as possible. This mentality is really the biggest thing that gives RPG Maker games a bad rep, and with effects here it's so easy to create your own complex animations that there really is no excuse not to. Now, that being said, let me run you through the basics. First things first. Download effects here and all the additional files you'll need for this tutorial. I'll leave links to everything in the description. However, here's what you should end up with. You should have the glorious main effects here folder in whatever version you need for your computer, and then one sample folder. Make sure to extract all of these, and then boom bada bing we are ready to rumble. Next, open the effects here folder and click on tool. From there, navigate to the effectsier.exe file and double click it. And just like that, we are ready to make some sexy animations. Now, for this tutorial, I'll basically just be covering the basic section of the effectsier manual, which can be found by clicking on help and then clicking on manual. This documentation is rather helpful, though a tad difficult to follow at times, hence why I made this tutorial. Anyways, let's get started making our first animation. Currently, when we click on the little green playback arrow, all that happens is a stagnant white square is displayed in the center of the screen. Now, this is pretty boring. So to change that, mosey on over to the bottom right corner of your screen and click on Node. Okay, so a lot of things just popped up on your screen, but don't get overwhelmed. While it may look like there are a lot of options, and I mean, there are, it's a lot easier to navigate than you might think. Let's start off by simply making our square move. Go to the toolbar on the top and click on the blue arrows. This is the position tab, and is how we move particles. Now, if you just want to set the position of a particle, you can leave it as is and simply drag these values around. But, I mean, that's still pretty boring and not really an animation. So, to have your particle move, you have to change set position to PVA, which stands for position, velocity, and acceleration. Click on that and whoa! Even more options. Again, don't worry. For now, just look at the speed section. On the line that says mean, click on the X tab and set it to 0.1. Now, click the little green arrow. Look at that, it's moving! Also, to navigate the viewer, press down on your middle mouse button to drag the screen. To zoom in or out, simply scroll your middle mouse button. And finally, to rotate the viewer, right click and drag. Okay, you've got your first little animation. Good job. Now, let's make more. Click on the little star right next to the position tab. This tab is known as basic settings. Go down to spawn count and set it to 100, then click play. As you can see, we've basically just made a huge line. That's because we haven't set any of the other particles to follow a different move route. So let's go do that now. Go back to the position tab, and this time look at the deviation section. Again, still only looking at speed. Set every single section, X, Y, and Z in deviation to 0.1, and set the X in the mean tab back to zero. Now, click play. OMG, they move in all directions! Mind equals blown. Additionally, if you want to shorten these particles' lifespans, go back to basic settings and just decrease their time to live. Very straightforward and very... Okay, that's cool and all, but they're still just flat white squares. That's pretty boring. Well, let's give them color and shape. But before that, quick tip. If you ever accidentally close a window and can't figure out how to get it back, on the top left, click on Window, then click Reset Window Position. This will put everything back to normal. Woo! Now, let's give this animation some texture. This is the part of the video where you kinda have to have downloaded the files from the link below to continue on, so go do that. Now, once you've done that, click on the orange box, otherwise known as the Basic Render Settings tab. Right next to where it says Texture, there is a Load button. Click on this and navigate to wherever you stored your Sample 3 folder. Click into it and find the particle.png file. Click on that and then click open. Immediately, your squares should vanish and a beautiful glowing ball of light should replace them. Congratulations, you have just imported your first texture. Now, normally particles don't just blip in and out of existence, right? Normally there's a fade of some kind, so let's go add that. Just below where you imported your texture, find the Fade Out and Fade In tab. Change both of them from Disabled to Enabled, and change the frame count to 15. Or whatever you like, I guess. Click Play and ooh, they look so natural now. But white is a pretty boring color, so let's spruce things up a little. Click on the other box, the blue one, otherwise known as the Render Settings tab. 
If you want all of your particles to just be one color, then just go to the Color All tab and pick what color you want, either by inputting values or by selecting it on the color wheel. But again, only one color is kind of boring, so let's make it choose a color at random. Go to where it says Fixed and change it to say, well, random. From here you can set a min and max value, and Effectseer will randomly pick colors from in between them. If you want access to all colors, just make it a min of black and a max of white. You can also fiddle with the opacity if you like. Click play and boom. Colors. While this is pretty cool and all, these colors are also kind of flat. Well, let's go fix that. Go back to the basic render settings tab and mosey on down to the blend section. Click on, well, blend and change it to additive. Now, most of the time this is what you'll be using, though you can come up with some pretty cool effects using the other modes. Anyways, that's it. You've got colors and shape. Congrats. That was pretty damn epic. But did we rotate the particles? No. Did we enlarge them? No. Well, I guess that means we're still pretty lame. To do this, let's get a fresh start. Save your current project somewhere. Personally, I created a folder inside of the official effects here folder to hold all my projects. After you've saved your project, click File, select New Project, and let's get rolling. Select your node, and then click on the tab with the green arrows, also called the Rotation tab. Just like with Position before, let's change Fixed Angle to PVA, and then in the Angular Velocity section, change the Mean of Z to 5. Now, you'd think this would work, but nope, you click play and nothing changes. Why is that? Well, it's because you didn't go into the render settings tab and change the configuration from billboard to rotated billboard, dummy. Go do that now. Once you've done that, your beautiful little square should rotate counterclockwise. Amazing. Now, let's mess with the scale of this particle. Go to the conveniently named scale tab and again change it to PVA. No, wait, I pranked you! You actually have to change it to PVA single, you fool! Ha 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 ha! Uh, yeah, change it to PVA single and then input 0.01 for the expansion speed. Also, make sure you made it 0.01 in the mean section, not the deviation section. Anyways, click play and now your square rotates and gets big at the same time. This is epic gamer moment. Okay guys, I've gotta come clean. I just can't keep up this facade any longer. I hate Mr. Square. Let's squish him. Go to Blue Box Render Settings McGee and change the vertex codes from default to fixed. Now you can just screw with these settings and make whatever abomination you'd like. However, I shall be a merciful god and just make him a rectangle. There are some additional steps you can take if you want to turn this into something that looks cool, but I'd rather move on to making the more complicated cool things like an epic slash animation coming soon to tutorials near you. Again, I'd recommend making a new project for this one. Anywho, this shall be the ultimate test of your skills up to this point. Let's make an actual animation. First things first, go down next to your playback button and change the playback time to end at 30 frames. This will make your animation shorter. Now, let's shimmy on over to our first node. Click it and go to the star tab. Let's change the name of this node to be slash, just so we remember what's what a little easier. Next, change the time to live to 20 frames. That's all for this tab. Let's move over to the rotation tab. Keep everything as is by default, but change the Z value to negative 45. That's it, moving on to the scale tab. Change the scaling mode to easing. This will make the animation much more fluid. For the start mean, change X to 4. Then for the end mean, change Y to 25. Change ease in to fastest and ease out to slowest. Changing the easing options is very important as it will determine how quickly your animation wanes out and setting it up this way looks the most sword attacky like. Next, let's move over to the basic render settings tab. For this node, we're going to load in the line 01 texture, which can be found in the effects of your folder under sample, then next soft 01, and then texture. Click line 1 and open it. Finally, change the blend mode to additive, like I said you would for every project ever, and you're done with this tab. Finally, let's go to render settings. Make sure the configuration is rotated billboard so your rotation settings from earlier will actually apply. After that, it's color time, baby! Change color all to easing and then set whatever colors you want. Experiment a little, find what works and what you think looks good. After you're done, change the ease in and out settings to slowest and fastest respectively. Save the project and click play. It should look like a sword slashing. Good job, your first practical animation is complete. Now this looks pretty good, but it's also a little bit bland. We should add an impact animation too. In the bottom left corner, right click on root and select add node. Make sure you don't add the node off of the other node as this will make the new node a child of the first node, which for the time being, we don't want. Click on your new node and let's get parameter setting. First, go to basic settings. Change the name of this node to impact, the spawn count to 10, and the time to live to 20 frames. That's all for this tab. Next, in the rotation tab, change fixed angle to PVA and set the Z in the deviation setting for angle to 180. 
Moving on to the scale tab, let's change the method again to easing and then change the end mean y to 10. Again, change the ease in and out settings to fastest and slowest respectively. Next, it's feature time, baby. Go to the basic render settings tab and load in the line 01 texture yet again. Now, what do you think we're gonna change the blend mode to? Additive? You're right. And again, that's all for this tab. Moving on to render settings, this is where the magic happens. Change the configuration to rotated billboard and the color all setting to easing. Again, you can use whatever colors here you would like, and also again set the ease in and out settings to slowest and fastest. Again, please tinker with this effect. Don't just take what I'm saying and change nothing. Go to your scale tab and mess with the Y value we set before. Go to your spawn count and play with it until you find what you think looks good. Don't just take what I said here at face value. Do more than that. Be creative. I know you got this. Now let's tidy all this up and make it look just a little bit better. Create yet another new node and go to the basic settings tab. Change the name to Flash, and the time to live to 20 frames. Go to the Scale tab and set the method to PVA Single, and then change the expansion speed mean to 0.6. Next is everybody's favorite part, add in the texture, but this time let's use Particle.png. This can be found in the sample folder we downloaded and used for the first section of this tutorial. Change the blend mode to, and say it with me y'all, Additive, and then go to Render Settings. This time we don't need to change the configuration, we just need to do the same thing we have been doing already with the color section, which is, fixed is changed to easing, you do whatever colors you want, and ease in and out get changed to slowest and fastest respectively. I will say however, that you should set the end color's opacity to zero for every single one of these no matter what. Your animations will look 800 million times better if you do. Now, you can leave your animation like this, this looks really good, but you can always add more. You could duplicate your current flash node, but change the texture to something else, that might make your animation look even better. Or you could add another slash, the possibilities really are endless, and hopefully by me running you through the very basics of this tool, you have a decent understanding of how to do some pretty cool effects. Last minute quick tip addition! If you have an animation already made, you can go to Window and click on Recorder to export that animation as a sprite sheet. It may take a little screwing around to get the parameters right on the recording, but this is super helpful if you want to use this engine to make animations for RPG Maker MV instead of MZ. Now there is so much more you could do with this engine, I've only scratched the surface here. For a beginner, I do think this is a good jumping off point, but if you'd like me to delve deeper into the effects here manual and cover the rest of the tutorial, just let me know in the comments below. If you're dying for more, be sure to give the manual a read through on your own. It goes even more in depth on this than I did, though like I said before, the English is a tad broken. Thank you for watching my croutons, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.